I remember being at primary school and the bell goes and then we go inside and then we, we work and do that stuff and then the bell goes and we go outside and we play and then the bell goes again and we come inside. I remember one day sitting and I asked my fellow students, why when the bell goes we go inside and the bell goes again and we go outside? And they turned to me and they went, Akeem, just play, just, just play. Can we just, do you not want to come play? And I was like, no, nah, I want to, I want to sit here and think about this. <laughs> so fast forward, I guess like 23 years <laughs> and I'm still <laughs> contemplating freedom. Um, <laughs> but that's grown. It's definitely grown and it's grown into, it, there's always been the curiosity of, oh, what do you think about this? But even more so now, it's like, okay, how do I create art about this? Um, as well as just talk about it. And I feel like there's an art in conversations. There's an art in, in there's something that inspires the painter or the writer or the choreographer or the filmmaker when they just converse around the themes that they want to do their thing on. So I've been researching freedom through uh, the process of making some new performances. One of those is Negus Genesis and the other one is Free. So I've also been screening films and just using all these products of my art to have conversations around freedom. To not only build to making free the show, but also to get people thinking, to just get people thinking. The art of provocation, you know, pr provoking something to someone. I guess I'll just start from w where we began chronologically. So, you know, we, we received the funding and then the first thing we had to do was uh, a residency at ARC in Stockton for Negus Genesis. So Negus, the whole Negus universe started from a film um, uh, that was funded by Sadler's Wells. Negus is about N-E-G-U-S, that word meaning emperor, king, and coming of Ethiopian roots. And how it sounds, it can be mistaken for another word that actually has been used to derogatize, uh, is a derogatory term. To, to, to put, make people lesser. So I find it interesting how the words sound similar because phonetics uh, are what phonetics are. So we did Stockton. We shared, I worked with Chris Radford, Azizi Cole, Sosa Cole, who were on the music, and myself and Chris Radford, we were working through the movement. Um, and we shared something at the end of the week that yeah, the feedback that we got was, was spot on what I was seeking uh, with the piece. People really got that sensitivity between, you know, expressing the sensitivity between black men, expressing um, yeah. the exaggerated character, caricature of the, the aggression or the hyper-masculinity, the this, the that, you know, the animalistic the animalism that is sometimes portrayed on people of African descent. Um, especially men, I even men in general, you know, men, men regardless of race, men are seen to be more violent, more aggressive, men are more, men are seen to be more lacking of emotion and so on and so forth, which is not true, it's not true. We all feel, you know, we all feel and we all have responses to how we feel.
for me, this piece was absolutely integral and vital when it came to the mental health and the understanding of black men and their mental health. That embrace at the end between two masculine black men is absolutely significant when it comes to our understanding of black men and masculinity, because it's oftentimes associated with a toxic environment, with gang culture, with things that the media have pushed forward as this is the narrative, this is the way to be black, uh, this is the way to be a black man. And it, it, it has its own duality, especially considering the fact that love between black men has been shunned and perceived with underlying homophobia um, through general society, which comes from colonialism, the idea that separation, that black men can't show affection or show um, any for form of sentiment towards one another. So this kind of impact where essentially they're having this conflict in the beginning um, to separate, like to show the, the chronological separation of black people and black men and black community for them to come together and resolve and an aspect of forgiveness at the end is, is just so significant because it represents what a lot of black men should be doing, how they should be feeling about themselves and other black men. I, l I watch the piece through um, a racialized lens because of the term negus. So before I came, I saw uh, Negus Genesis and I was instantly curious because I know where the term Negus comes from um, and so I've, I saw it as the uh, representation of the black struggle I saw it as um, like you said in, when we were watching or just after the piece that when it, when the water was playing it made me think instantly of the transatlantic slave trade mm -hmm. and then being taken to um, a new place displaced and unable to connect to self. That's what racialized slavery was about. It was about removing people's connection to self, to soul, and then you can never self-actualize, you can never achieve your potential, and you won't challenge the system. And they undid that, they undid that teaching by fighting, going through the conflict, which we all have in life, but racialized conflict is a particular one, and anti-black conflict is a particular experience. But they fought through the conflict and came together at the end, and when Akeem said he likes to leave the space with healing or reconciliation, I felt that, and that was important. It's very important when you're reflecting on the trauma of living in a white supremacist society to have that healing at the end. The tone of the piece was really resonating and you could really see what was happening and the emotion that came across in the piece was really, really emotional, really, really moving, um, really strong. And it really makes me want to go and do loads of reading and loads of research and just find out more about the history and the themes of the piece, really. I was completely engrossed in it. I was drawn into that world and the conflict and the, the coming together. Um, I kind of need time to let it settle within me and, and think about it, but it's so moving and very powerful. That's what Negus is, because the, the two men inside this work then eventually love on each other, you know? Eventually say, yo, I see you. Um, I see the pain you're going through, and it is, it is valid. Now I'm coming to make a show called Free, which uh, started, that journey started about 10 years ago a process can inspire a new process. I'm creating Negus Genesis. We show Negus Genesis. We have conversations around freedom. I'm making the songs for free because it's going to be a reggae, dance, theater, contemporary dance musical. <laughs> um, so we're writing original music for it and we perform some of that. And then again, ask people, what, you know, what makes you feel free? What does freedom mean to you? And it's been so interesting getting people's answers and a lot of these answers reflect other people's lives. A lot of these answers resonate. Take me to a place where I'm free. Leave the people there so they can see. Take me to a place where I'm free. Leave the people there so they can see. Take me to a place where I'm free. Leave the so they can see Take me to a place where I'm free Leave the people there so they can see Who feels it, knows it But my friend, you've never felt it So what makes you think you can fix it? Our problem, so our solution yeah. I said enough with the confusion For me, freedom is existence, just existence about any 
navigation of difficulty about that existence, a natural existence. Yeah, I think to, to love who I want to love, who to be free to love who I want to love, to be able to talk to who I want to talk to, to be able to speak my mind to who I want to speak to my mind to. Freedom to me today was wearing my hair out. So wearing an afro in a majority white town um, and just not feeling the attention, the stares, the comments, just not feeling it, just feeling my throat. That, that's been freedom for me today. To just be able to be who you are without having to mask anything, without having to pretend to fit in in a different way. It's that, that really, you don't feel it very often. You feel it around certain people. Sometimes you have situations you feel like that, but that is what I think it feels like for true freedom, if that makes sense. I think what you've managed to voice and express is what a lot of people are questioning every day and going through. It was just this morning that I was questioning the idea of safety mm. and feeling safe and free and what my path is and what stories exactly I want to tell and not be frightened to tell. So I kind of want to say thank you for your, for your honesty. Um, and you asked about when we're free and lots of people have touched on it, but I would say for me, being in nature, actually often being in solitude, when there isn't the noise of everything else that doesn't allow you to think about what it is that you want and what your heart is telling you, um, and being creative, like moving your body, singing, writing, writing words, drawing, anything that allows you to kind of break out of the box and the confines of the everyday. But yeah, all in all, thank you very much. After the week in arc with myself, Chris, Z and Zosa, uh, which was like, was like a coming together of different bits that we have collected over the year and also, for, you know, through the film and other things, uh, just making like the first bit of material for the work. Since then, uh, I did an audition for the, for the for the piece so that other, you know, people can take over the the helm as performers, and that's where I've come to find myself with Liam and Jeremiah and yeah I feel like we've gone a far away with the work but it still has places to go and so it's it's in that um, for me in my brain I'm in that place of oh I see this potential that potential this potential but at the same time I'm having to think of the fact that we're presenting today and those potentials can sit until I you know we work on what this is what the substance of what we have right now is so that we can deliver it to an audience. So it was nice to see how these bodies were articulating uh, uh, African-derived movements in a way that I rarely see. And, uh, you know, them obviously being different in so many ways. Like I really loved how everyone of them was having a, you know, a particular take on, on the movement and embodying it in a way that I, I felt authentic, you know, to the, to the overall ritualistic idea that the piece had. It felt like I was exploring their feelings with them in a way. Like um, it felt very fraught at points and then very tender and also joyous and funny and then also kind of like very intense as well and then and then light and so like I felt like I went on this journey um, and kind of reminded myself that it was a very vulnerable thing to witness so I'm kind of grateful for that as well. So then we did the Triple Bill film screening, uh, Freedom on screen, Freedom Dances on screen uh, at Hyde Park Picture House. That was really cool. Like to get the chance to 
put films in a space where I've like watched so many films and is like a well-known space in the city and to have so many different people come down and watch the films and someone said if people watch these three films the world would be a better place and I'm just like what okay cool <laughs> you know that's the intention you know when I make work for me because my work is artivism It's an interesting one for freedom because I would say I'd say I can't define freedom um, because I'd say I've not had freedom yet. I'd say freedom is something that you can't be given, it's something that you have to take. I would say what I watched in there felt like freedom. Um, it felt like the freedom to express, the freedom to say and do and be who you want to be. So I'm not really sure how to define freedom, but I do know it's a feeling that, that can only be taken for yourself. It's always important for us to have opportunities to hear other people's experiences, whether they're similar to ours, whether they're different. Um, we can always learn something from hearing a story that's not our own. And I think it's important for us um, to be exposed to as many narratives as possible. Freedom to me is peace of mind and just being able to, to be yourself, to live your life without, you know, the kind of eyes of others or criticism or someone kind of being a barrier to you having that peace of mind or having, uh, well, having control over your own life. I want to say thank you to you both for your expression of freedom and as we speak, when you know who you are, that's freedom. A part, a part of the process of making work for me is showing something unfinished and speaking about it to people, to audiences, not to people who are also art professionals, not just them, but to people who don't watch stuff or they don't watch stuff regularly or they, you know, they don't know much about the artistic side, of the artistic process, but they enjoy and they feel. From you enjoy and you feel or you can have a, you can decipher an opinion, you are you can, you know, you can share in the process of something and you can develop with you can help me develop. You know, not just the the professional who's a professional artist, but you know, someone who's just walking on the street, man. I actually feel really free when I'm dancing. That's kind of why I chose it as a profession, um, yeah, genuinely. I remember my mom asking me, are you sure this is what you want to do? And I was like, yeah, because when I do this, I feel incredible. Like, I can't really... Saying I feel free is just a... <laughs> compressed version of actually describing what it is that I feel, because there's no words to describe what I feel when I dance.